the problem, maybe the, the weakness we find even in the Anti-Corruption Commission and law enforcement agencies, they do the announcements at the beginning. We have arrested. Then they fail to continuously update society on the cases and what is happening. And therefore, what remains in society, in the cases, um, in, in the society's mind is that the person is guilty. Whilst we, as the uh, Transparency International Zambia, we would want anybody who is guilty of corruption and many other crimes to be brought to book. But at the same time, we don't want just to hang anybody just because we suspect them. We would want to have the law enforcement agencies to do a good investigation, find evidence, and at a point where they are fully satisfied that they, this is um, good to go to the courts of law, perhaps then they can update society and they continuously try to update society. So we don't want to measure the success of the law enforcement agencies by announcing that we are investigating, by announcing that um, we have arrested somebody. You know, the success should be in the successful prosecution of those that are found to be guilty um, um, and those that are found to be corrupt. That's when we can say um, there has been an improvement in the, uh, the, in the, in the way co um, corruption is being fought. Mm -hmm. At the moment, if we are to talk about um, um, improvement, it's only improvement in announcing the number of cases. But the announcement is just mere announcement. And we might be finding very soon we are entering knowledge and knowledge and so on yet we would have made so much noise. Mm. While it's exciting that they are following up cases of corruption, but it's not good enough, uh, what we want is for them to do a thorough job and to give us successful prosecution of those that are found guilty. Then right. we, can, we can judge them that in this period of time, the law enforcement agencies have moved from a, 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 an inactive level to a much more proactive and active level. And we can tell them either successful or not successful. Now, usually the same cases that we make reference to, uh, when they tend to have politicians involved, usually they don't end with the politicians being found guilty, like you've also made reference to, because the public will be excited, so our society will be excited about it, thinking this person has been found uh, a guilty, which is contrary to what usually even happens. Now, do you think that the implication now of the civil servants, the ones we've made reference to, the fact that it's civil servants and not exactly politicians implicated in the case may also um, uh, uh, cause a prediction of the of the outcome and and maybe uh, this could be easier for the Anti-Corruption Commission to, to, to investigate and find this evidence. So, in, in this case, um, the Anti-Corruption, under the Anti-Corruption uh, Anti Act, um, um, a civil society, when uh, I mean a civil service, a civil servant, when they are uh, being investigated, I think at the level of where they are being arrested, um, the person can be recommended for suspension, so that the investigations are done without um, that civil servant um, going into the area of uh, tempering with evidence. But unfortunately, this has been destroyed by the politicians themselves. If we look back again, we would find that there were some politicians who were, who, were, who were arrested and they were suspended by the authority, by the executive. And there were others who were um, led to work, including the ministers. And the, the former presidents are referred to them like, unless they are found guilty, that's when they can go. But to help the investigations, uh, what should be done in a transparent and um, um, open manner should be to lead to let those civil servants who have been arrested to be on um, um, on, on leave until such a time the the the, um, the investigations are concluded. This should not only apply to the civil servants, but should apply also to um, to to, uh, to ministers and any other higher um, or holding uh, official in government. That's when we can do a right. So, but when you leave somebody working there and you investigate them, they are using the same computers there, they're using the same offices, they're, they're, using, they're using the same system, they can actually tamper with evidence. And that's why they can increase also to the failure of certain cases uh, that are taken to court by the Anti-Corruption Commission and other law enforcement agencies. So uh, the executive can help deal with this and the system itself can help um, in, enforce that anyone who is investigated to the point of being arrested, those people can be put on leave pending in a further investigation or conclusion of the case 
uh, so that they don't temper with the evidence. Perhaps then we can see the, the investigations can be uh, much more cleaner, much more enhanced, rather than letting them still be in the same position, uh, holding the same computers and the system. There is a likelihood that they can temper with the evidence. Mm. Um, lastly, and I know you said this earlier on, that this pretty much shows that uh, perhaps there could be some influence, some political influence uh, in, in some of these um, uh, cases. But there's also been the suspicion of, of senior civil servants being used as, as fronts for some of these corrupt practices. What do you think needs to be done to avoid the possibility of them being easily manipulated uh, when it comes to some of these uh, issues? Um, well, as much as we, we um, really know that there is corruption in the civil service, um, sometimes positions such as uh, permanent secretaries, directors, and sometimes if you go to parastatos, the managing directors, um, those who are holding a, a government position, for instance, those who are under ZRA, those who are under ZICA, those who are under uh, uh, RDA, uh, ZESCO, and many other uh, uh, quasi-government organizations, um, they often come under immense pressure from the politicians. Um, we remember there was some, some time back a recording from somebody who was um, trying to influence uh, the Bank of Zambia, the former Bank of uh, Zambia governor to do something. But they come under immense uh, pressure. And because you are working in a system, and in the way the system of government works, you receive so much commands. And when it comes from the highest office, or sometimes even when the highest office is misrepresented, um, instructions coming from there falsely that you have to obey, sometimes it's difficult for you um, to uh, deny that. So we find that civil servants also, while they themselves they, they, they can be found to be uh, guilty of corruption, but they also, in all honesty, receive a lot of pressure from um, 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 the, uh, the, the, the politicians. That's why we keep saying, if the civil service is left clean, only professionals, that would improve much, much the civil service. And we were expecting this to start happening because with the current regime, when they were uh, in the opposition, they really uh, emphasized that they wanted to professionalize the civil service. And, but unfortunately, we are seeing the same trend where we have some of the permanent secretary are those people who were merely politicians who have been again appointed in those. And if you are a politician and you are appointed, you respond to your boss. So it's difficult for you to respond, for instance, to the secretary, to the, to the cabinet. But you will pay much more allegiance, actually, um, to the one who appointed you, who is the president. So we are also um, fearful that the professionalization of civil service in Zambia um, is not yet to come in the few years' uh, time. We need such a time when all these who are coming through uh, have risen through ranks. And when they rise through ranks, it's actually it's, it's protecting their tenure of office. It's showing that they have come not because somebody has appointed them from being a political party leader to immediately becoming a PS, but somebody who has risen through ranks. And that way, they can be protected by the profession, not by the appointment. So we, we, we can indeed say politicians have a bigger influence on the civil servants. And we are hoping that President HH, um, or, or, although he has also appointed um, some politicians to head uh, some of these ministries, he can push towards that, um, the professionalization of the civil service. And once we do that, even in cases of abuse, cases of be, paying allegiance to other um, authorities other than the cabinet office might happen and, the and political um, and, and, and the corruption might be reduced in the civil service. We hope that can happen. But as of now, we still have a long way to go.